It is the last day of the year. It is a time for endings and a time for beginnings. And it is this that we see too in the selections from scripture that we have read today. Now we all know what is the beginning of the gospel. This feast of Christmas, the birth of the Lord, and the revelation of the Lord at his baptism that we begin today to anticipate. And from the baptism, we ourselves take our beginning, each of us remembering the day in which we entered the font, were baptized into the water of the Lord's baptism, were baptized into the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, beginning our life in his likeness, in his footsteps, as vessels and members of his grace and his life in the world. We know how we begin, but because it is the end of the year, we also reflect on what is the end of our life. And we have in the epistle the words of St. Paul as he reflects on the end of his life. And it is good that we repeat them again, and it is helpful that they are brief so that we can. He speaks to his disciple Timothy, urging him to always be steady, to endure suffering, to do the work of a preacher of good news, to fulfill his ministry. And then he says, because I, I am almost done. So we understand he is leaving this work to others. And then he reflects on this coming end of his life. I am already on the point of being sacrificed. The time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not only to me, but to all who have loved his appearing. Now, we know where we begin. We know how we would like to end because we would wish that as we approach the day of our own deaths, we may say with St. Paul, I have fought the good fight. I have run the race. I have kept the faith and I know there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. This is what we want to be able to say. So we have the bookends of our life, the beginning in birth and baptism, and the end, the goal to be able to say, I have fought the good fight. I have run the race with endurance. I have kept the faith. But what comes in between? This is the matter for us to discuss today. Not just beginnings and endings, but what it is that is begun and ended. And the epistle speaks only briefly of this. It reminds us that we who begin and end our lives in Christ are the ones who have loved his appearing, his revelation to the world. We keep this glory, this joy before our eyes, before our mind, and kept close within our heart at all times. We are those who respond to the gospel of repentance that is preached by John, understanding that we must be changed in our way of thinking, in our way of feeling, in our way of being. We are called to be transformed, renewed, recreated, to love Christ's appearing is to respond to his call to understand that his presence, his appearance in our midst 
means that things cannot remain as they were. We are called to be changed. And we are called to become the instruments of change in the world. Now, I was watching TV a couple days ago, and I saw the ad that Google has for their website that shows what people have searched for in the last year. And without getting into any political questions, I was distressed that so much of what people think of as changing the world is about yelling for other people to change the world. Not that there's anything wrong with making a sign or posting something on Twitter or Facebook or saying that's not acceptable, that shouldn't be done. But I want to be clear. When we as Christians are called to be changed ourselves and to be instruments and agents of the Lord's transformation in the world, this is not what we are talking about. God forbid I tell you, make a sign and say, more people should be Christians. It would seem a little bit ridiculous. God forbid I send you out on the corner to say, repent. People have heard this story before. As a Christian, as those who see the appearing of the Lord, his theophany, his revelation to us. What we are called to is far more difficult than a simple web search on how to make a sign would reflect. We are called to be changed in our minds and in our hearts. And this is what the word repentance means. We are called to lay aside the old ways of thinking the old values, the things that our society, our nature considers to be important, we are called to question and to lay aside for the love of the Lord who appears to us in these great feasts. We are called not to value food or clothing or wealth or even the praise and acclaim of those around us. We are called to love Christ's presence and to live the Lord's presence. We are called in our daily life to be vessels of love, of grace, of patience, of endurance, of forgiveness, of quiet and hopeful peace in the world. We are called to be icons of what a human being is supposed to be, a creature of personal relationships and love whose eyes are fixed on our Creator, so that everyone may see that in faith in Christ, in active trust in devoted, patient relationship with our Savior, in this way of life, fulfillment is found. In this way of life, a human being is most whole, most strong, most marvelous, most loving, most patient, most kind. This is what we are called to today. To look at Christ, to allow Him to change our minds, our hearts, our lives, to follow Him into the font and out of the font. Remembering the words of the Apostle, that as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. 
you wear and bear Christ out in the world. We are his body. We are his visible hands working salvation in the midst of the world. We cannot be as we have been. And on this day of endings and beginnings, let us make a new beginning, remembering the day of our death that will come one day and striving towards that end so that we may say with St. Paul, I have fought the good fight. I have run the race. I have kept the faith. In this active, trusting faith in the Lord, let us stand and continue the divine liturgy.